Hey everybody, this is Josh. I'm just popping in here uh, real quick at the beginning to let you know that this is the first episode of a new season of Are We Dead Yet? Um, we're just trying something new while David is out on paternity leave, and we'll see how long it lasts. I uh, hope you'll enjoy it. I hope you'll stick with us. Um, if you haven't checked out the lore episode that we dropped before this one, uh, check it out. Um, if you don't want to be completely lost in what setting we're in or, or anything like that. Also, uh, just so you know, um, we are recording on Discord, and uh, the audio uh, recording bot that's on there um, has a lot of technical glitches that happen. So you may hear uh, issues where people seem to be slowing up or, or, or speeding up with their, their speech. Um, we think we've resolved those issues going forward, but these first two episodes might be a little a little rough. So uh, stick with us, though, because it gets good, I promise. And with that, let's get to the show. Sinister secrets and dark truths. Mystical creatures and magical powers. Dark dungeons and enlightened paths all lead us to ask that one question as time marches onward. Are we dead yet? So welcome to the first episode of whatever this thing is that we keep redoing and restarting. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, do you all want to go through and introduce your characters, this lovely little world that I have created for you all? Sure. Let's. All right, no. Who wants to go first? <laughs> I'll go ahead and go first. Sure. Um, so my name is Vora Strix. Um, I can go by Vora for short. I am a kobold shaman from the mountains of Fimith. Yep. Um, and I have received a vision from my god, Kurt Olmack, um, to try and reunify the, the bond between kobold and erd, which, for those who don't know, erds are winged kobolds uh, who worship a different god. Um, and in so doing, I am also tasked with by my, my band of kobolds to see what the fuck is up with the mountain going on, because uh, the kingdoms have been overmining the mountain, and it's been causing our caves to cave in and stuff, so it's a... Uh, a hazard. Okay, cool. Who wants to go next? All right, fuck it, I'll go. So, my name is Chester, and I belong to the impressive dynamic duo of inglorious exploiting spies, and we operate within Trico. No, superheroes. Oh, you, you want to go with superheroes? Okay. No, superheroes in parentheses, dude. Oh, oh, gotcha, gotcha. John, you fucked it up already. I fucked everything up. You fucked it up. Anyways, yeah, we're 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 all right at what we do. Uh, small time stuff, mostly. Um, I'm a felis. I'm a cat person. I have a uh, blue gray, uh, very nice coat and uh, starry blue eyes. I'm also like three feet tall. I'm a, I'm a small one. Nice. Uh, does your character have any particular goals or aspirations, or just to? Just to fuck shit up and make money. I'm just trying to make it in this crazy world, you know what I'm saying? Sounds good. <laughs> All 
All right, uh, Zoe. No, I don't want to go next. Have well, Chris. Chris didn't go yet. Right, but you're part of the the other part of the dynamic duo. <laughs> That's true. Okay. <laughs> um, my name is gonna be it. <laughs> it. I love it. You went with it. <laughs> I went with it. Oh my god. Okay. Woo. Um. Is that chapter one or chapter two? Oh god. Oh, it's chapter <laughs> point five. Is that cousin it? <laughs> Close. I just picked it. Okay. Um. <laughs> it it. Um. And my race is an Equiqui, which is pretty much a small version of an owlbear. Yeah, they're a ranger. Um, they're also part of titties. <laughs> yeah. I supposed to say anything else? I don't really have a background for them. Sorry. Okay, no worries. Uh, <laughs> have any? Is it also just trying to make it in this crazy world? For sure. So I mean, it's it's hard when you're like three feet tall. <laughs> it's hard life out um, there. And I think John kind of blew past it in his introduction. Could you explain what titties is? Titties is our team acronym for each other. So I'll re-say it again if I can get to it. There you go. All righty. Oh, yeah. So it's the impressive dynamic duo of inglorious, exploiting, and then suspised, but in parentheses, superheroes. Titties. Titty. <laughs> nice. Ooh. Titties. T-I-D-D-I-S. Don't get it wrong. Yeah, it's the tasteful way to say titties. Um, okay, Chris. All right. So my guy is a dwarf cleric named Eberstonoth. He is a cleric who used to be a blacksmith, but took up the, uh, the call of his god to watch a remote northern monastery off the coast of Trico. And uh, he was he was like the the caretaker, pretty much like as a storm cleric, it was his job to keep everything from falling apart, literally from the uh, the weather and the rage of the storm and all that. But he failed uh, in his duty at one day, and now he's on a pilgrimage to discover why why he wasn't uh, connected enough with his deity in order to protect the the monastery. Very cool. So you're basically perched up in that little mountain, mountain top. Yep, up there on the northern tip. Okay, cool, cool. You guys are uh, currently um, arriving in District Fifty Three of Trico. Uh, you're here to take a little R and R after your latest various exploits, or you know maybe just kind of getting your your feet wet in the city. Uh, first, you know maybe it's your first day in the city. I don't know. Each of you can kind of fill that in as you go. But uh, you're in town because it's the 300th anniversary festival, uh, celebrating the discovery of binding, the magic that helps push the water through the pipes of the city provides uh, food to the uh, citizens and has basically revolutionized the whole fantasy world that we're in. So it's a hoot and a holler. You know, maybe maybe you're arriving via a steam train. You know, maybe uh, you're just, you know, slinking in through some back alley or whatever, but here you are in District 53. There's a variety of of different... uh, things to do here at the festival there's food games performers there's lectures going on there's music uh there's vendors that are peddling various you know wares and sundries the main attraction though is the concert that is going to be put on uh by a world famous performer tonight named cortana in the stadium here in district 53 and you've all managed to obtain a ticket for the performance. Could each of you roll a d20? What did you want us to roll for? Sorry. Just roll a d20. Okay. This result determines what row you're going to be sitting in (laughs) at the concert. Oh, cool. I get like front row seat. Yeah. (laughs) The only time a one is amazing. Yeah, yeah. You you can't fail on this roll. Okay. So (laughs) for some reason... Um, for some reason, Chester, you got 
you got a, a, a ticket for the fifth row, but it you got a seat eight rows back. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I mean, when you're swiping tickets, you can't really choose. No, no. I mean, the vendor just the vendor's getting paid minimum wage. He's just handing out tickets. He doesn't go it on. You're he assuming care. we bought our tickets. <laughs> oh, okay, there is that too. Yeah, if 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 you uh, if you want to come up with a, a clever way you two got your tickets, feel free. <laughs> anyway, like I said, there's lots of activities that you can do at this facility. It's uh, about mid morning right now. The concert's not for about six hours or so, um, so you've got some time to peruse uh, the various things. Um, like I said, there's food and drink. Uh, you, you, you notice there's a large uh, tent that just has this beautiful aroma coming through it. And uh, Chester and It, you both notice that there is a good potential for picking up rumors of maybe some high-value targets in the city uh, for thievery or, or trickery of some sort. Um, mm-hmm. uh, there are various game booths set up. Uh, you know, just some of the classics, you know, knock down the can, hit the bell with the hammer, you know, all that kind of stuff. There's lectures that are advertised at various locations in the district. Let me, uh, let me know. Whoever wants to go first, feel free. So I think it and I will head towards that, uh, the food area because you can't commit crime on an empty stomach. Sure. Yeah. I mean, there's all, all variety of food here cooked up and served up here. I'm looking for a... I'm looking for a saucer of milk and some fish. Oh, for sure. That's easy to find. Yeah. Um, y- y- you kind of have to like push your way through the crowd though, because you're so, you're so tiny. But yeah, you eventually do uh, find a uh, vendor that has uh, some nice grilled fish going on that smells just heavenly. He sort of patronizes you a little bit when you ask for a saucer of milk, but he ob- he obliges. Okay. He's not a dick. All right. Totally. Yeah. I'll remember that. And as you're enjoying your milk, go ahead and roll a d6. Two. Okay. So you don't pick up anything uh, too exciting at first. You overhear what looked like a couple of official-looking people discussing a murder at the Temple of Light in District 24. Uh, And one of them says... uh, yeah, the weird thing is they just, uh, they left all the gold and all the, uh, holy symbols that, you know, fetch pretty price. So I don't think it was a, a robbery. I think it was just a, a cold-blooded murder. And you hear them discuss, uh, that they left a couple of guards at the, uh, temple to investigate, but it doesn't sound like it's too hard to get in and out. Um, so it, how, uh, are you pretty close to me right now? Uh, yeah, I'll fo- I followed you. I started munching on some okay. food with you. So I'm going to cast a message, and I'm going to send that information via brainwave direct to you. Okay. Did I not hear it, too, then, I'm guessing? You would have heard it, but he's probably just making sure. Okay. It, it says, meow, lots of gold, uh, Temple of Light, District 26, only a few guards. We got this. <laughs> okay. I can't respond back to message, right? Using message. Oh, I can. can. You, give me one sentence. Okay. Hoot hoot! Alrighty, let's do this! <laughs> <laughs> it, go ahead and roll a d6 as well. And, and just to clarify, either uh, Vora or Ebris, are you going to be enjoying the food as well, or picking something else? Do we, do we actually know um, everyone? Or no, yeah, not yeah. yet. Uh, not quite. You have not all met yet. I'm just okay. trying to see who's doing what. Got it, got it. Bora is going to be going to a materials shop. Um, he has recently somehow lost his 50 GP diamond that he purchased for casting chromatic orb and needs a new one. Okay. Yeah, we'll resolve that in just a moment after I give... Uh, Zoe here, her rumor. Yeah. While Chester's rumors here was uh, particularly helpful here and gave you a target for some uh, quick money here, uh, this next rumor is a bit strange, and you think it might just be a couple people being jerks, but you overhear uh, two teenagers talking about how they think that Cortana, the performer that you're seeing tonight, 
is actually a succubus. Mm-hmm. And you hear them talking kind of like, nah, man, she's always with a different person every time she performs. And that person is like never seen again, you know? And what kind of, you know, uh, there's only a few things that could be. Either she's, uh, either, either she breaks up with everyone all the time or she's a succubus. And the other one's like, mm, yeah, you know, uh, according to my uh, calculations, I, uh, I do have to agree with you, and uh, I think that you're right. Maybe we can uh, catch her in the act tonight and uh, score some money off of her uh, for blackmail. Score some loot. We don't slut shame here. (laughs) We don't slut shame here. That's why I gave them those voices. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to catch her in the act. Yeah, we're going to get some loot. I mean, loot. So, so, Josh, can you describe their uh, choice of hat and facial hair? No facial hair, actually. They're they're teenage boys. They oh, okay. no, they have like that little like thin like paper pencil thin mustache, but uh, they both have like acne just all over. You know, like the um, you know the, the really bad teenage boy kind. Yeah. Uh, one of them just has these ridiculously thick glasses that is just like okay, okay, nerd lord. No, no that's orders. funny. Uh, no fedoras, but they give off the aura of uh, having a fedora. Okay. Like, like, maybe if they could afford it, they'd have some. Got it. Totally. Totally. I'm just going to lean over to, and talk, to, because obviously I'm not fancy like John. <laughs> not fan- so um, I'm going to be like, ho, ho. Oh, fuck. Cortana. <laughs> Cortana. Cortana. Whoa. Cortana. Succubus? Want to check it out? I'm now done with my meal, just lazily licking my my paws clean, and I'm like, uh, that Temple of Light thing really seems like the way to go. There's a lot of gold there, apparently. Only a few guards. I don't really care about succubi. Uh, let's jump over to uh, Vora. You were looking for a vendor selling some diamond? Yeah. So you find a vendor kind of close to the edge of the uh, the festival grounds that are that are going on here. He's he's selling all sorts of weird gems, claiming long life and healing properties. Uh, and uh, he catches your eye. Um, says, "Oh, oh, you are a you are a strange one." Yes. Um. Yes, I am interested in a. Uh, I need a new diamond for uh, casting spells with oh is that is that all that's all I need perhaps you have more that I would be interested in he holds out a nice shiny diamond and says uh, yes this this will run you about 50 gold but let me also interest you in this and he holds out a small ring and he says this ring was once part of the ancient family jewels of the kingdom that once occupied these lands that are now part of the city. And for only 100 gold, you can have both. I'm feeling a sense of swindle here, so I want to roll some insight. Uh, sure. Go for it. Oh, what? Yeah, with that roll, he produces a small certificate uh, proclaiming the authenticity of the ring. Uh, he doesn't promise any magical properties or anything with it, but uh, he does say uh, it, it it could be uh, of some value to somebody down the line. You know, I think, I think it's really pretty, so I'm going to go ahead and take it. Uh, sure. Okay. So he'll take your gold, and you get your two jewels, and you are off to the races, so to speak. Erbus, or er- Eb- Eberus, sorry. Yes. What would you uh, like to do? Games, food, lectures? Definitely feeling the lectures. Uh, is how religious is Trico? You'd say it said it's like administered by priests and priestesses, right? Yeah. So, um, so it's it's religious in the sense that like it's it's pretty tolerant of, of all of all deities, but they rather than take a uh, prescribed like you know, Blank is the god of war or whatever they just their their priests and their temples all just worship the domain itself fair, fair I, I would say fairly religious okay so i don't need to go preaching all the end is nigh then 
<laughs> I mean, you could, bro. <laughs> Good. I mean, I was thinking about it, but maybe a little too much. He's going to check out the uh, the lectures first. So you get to the lecture hall and you see that there are currently three going on right now. There's the lecture by the mage guildmaster, Justira, and she is lecturing on the strength and longevity of binding. And uh, basically, the, the, the short summary is that uh, she's, uh, she's going to be presenting on uh, recent breakthroughs uh, and research that the Mage's Guild has been working on and what they're hoping to work on and unlock in the next uh, 10 years. There's a traveling scholar by the name of Stromir Oakfinger, and he is lecturing on the uh, discoveries that he made on the recently raised continent of Eumorus. Um, and basically it's plants, animals, settlements, uh, who's who on that whole landmass. And then the third lecture going on right now is by Pargu Hammerfist. And he is a uh, Guild Artisan member. Uh, he's doing more of a uh, physical workshop and demonstration. Basically, he's uh, helping people improve, uh, improving people's knowledge on how to improve their uh, items and their weapons and their armor. Um, it's also slightly a pitch for recruiting people into the uh, Artisan's Guild. Nothing quite religious, but you have your choices. Well, as a as an ex clan crafter and huge Pargu Hammerfist fan, he's going to go <laughs> and attempt to get all of his uh, <laughs> all of his uh, merchandise signed. Sure. Um, so you show up, just the 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 wide eyed fan of uh, of, of Pargu Hammerfist. You're ready to do it. Uh, yeah, you walk into the lecture hall and you notice that. Uh, the lecture hall is made up of like workbenches that you would have recognized uh, from your days as a blacksmith. Uh, there, there's Pargu Hammerfist looking, you know, the gruff dwarf that that you uh, that you recognize from uh, posters that you've probably seen of like, you know, join the guild and stuff like that. Uh, he's standing there and he looks at you and uh, he just says, uh, "Find a seat and uh, we'll get we'll we'll get started right away." Uh, we're going to be uh, improving some of your gear uh, in this uh, in this here lecture. But, uh, follow along closely, and uh, you should uh, should pick up okay. Uh, uh, that's perfect, by the way. That uh, that dude's voice. <laughs> uh, where yeah. do you uh, where do you where do you pop a squat at? Uh, as, as close to the front as I can. Sure, you're front and center. And yeah, you go through about a uh, two-hour lecture of how to. Uh, are you going to work on your armor or your weapon? Well, I already got the plus one armor. Uh, I mean, this could be the reason why I have it. I don't think I could improve it anymore. Um, no, if you already have a plus one armor, let's let's go with your weapon then. That's fine. Sure. Um, so you spend these two hours just working on your on your hammer. He shows you how to kind of, you know reinforce some well, what kind of weapon do you a uh, warhammer a warhammer okay yeah he shows you how to you know treat the metal and 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 uh reforge it a little bit um you know nothing too fancy obviously because it's only a two hour uh course but um maybe maybe he has you like add like some cool spikes to one end of it or something nice and yeah. uh and yeah by the end of the the lecture you have a uh, an improved plus one uh, warhammer uh, in your lap, and uh, Pargu Hammerfist comes over and he's just like, you know, uh, that's uh, some pretty crafty uh, worksmanship there. You uh, did this before? Oh yeah, ex clan member myself, or clan crafter myself. I'm a big fan. I've been following your work for years. Oh, it's uh, very. Very nice of you to say. Well, uh, you ever uh, you ever plan on getting back into the guild? You uh, you hit me up. I might uh, I might know some guys who uh, who could use some some of this skill. Absolutely, sir. The name's Ebrus Stonoth. Ebrus. Oh, nice to meet you. 
heartily shake his hand with my starstruck manner. And uh, he goes to mix it up with some of the other students who also uh, did a good job. Um, okay, so after that little shindig, there's a few hours left before the concert. Is there any other activities anyone wants to do? Is that How far is, uh, oh, go for it, Chris. Oh, oh, well, I'm just gonna. No, never mind. Go for it. Okay, I was gonna say, how far is District 28? You keep bumping that number up. It was District uh, 24, I believe. Um, oh. <laughs> well, how far is it? Uh, about what would that be? 29 districts over, so it would probably take you about half a day to get over there. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to do a quick little afternoon heist, but. <laughs> I mean, you could. You could skip the concert. Oh, we could. Well, it, would you like to skip the concert to uh, go do a heist? Uh, I'll leave it up to you. I don't really care. I'm kind of like oh, in we, it. We didn't pay for these tickets, so I really don't care. You should hawk them real quick. Oh, let's sell the tickets. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna set up um, on a corner. Um, <laughs> and we're just gonna, you know, just tickets for sale. We've got Cortana tickets for sale. You say tickets for sale, and you are rushed by two hyperactive elven women who are so excited uh, that you said tickets for sale. And uh, one of them says, "Did did you say tickets for sale? Oh, you 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 certainly don't mean tickets for the concert tonight, do you?" That's right, ma'am. Oh, oh, are you are you sure? It's a it's a sold out show tonight, and and these were hard to get. Do you really want to give that up? And uh, I'm gonna get these like these big, big sad kitty eyes. I'm gonna say, well, my my meowther's in the hospital, and I can't make it tonight. So I'm just hoping to get a little bit of money to help with the medical bills. Uh, roll, roll some deception. Um, and I'd also like to, um, I'd like to use prestidigitation to change the row on the seats to one. Oh, clever. Okay. Uh, definitely roll with advantage. You said deception, correct? Yes, please. Oh, shit. Okay, 22... Versus a 19 plus one. Okay. So uh, you, th- these, these, th- this woman that's talking to you starts like tearing up a little bit. Just like, well, if your mom's in the hospital, then uh, uh, sure. I- I'd be happy to buy them off of you. That's, oh, that's so sad. You poor kitty. And uh, how much are you selling them for? Um, I'm going to ask her for, uh, how, how much are they going market price? Like how much if I bought these at a ticket stand? If you had bought these at a ticket stand, they would have gone for about 300 gold. Um, I'm going to say 500 gold per ticket because they're front row. Um, yeah, I mean, she, she pays it. Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. Wow. With a, with a 22, you've. I'm not gonna. You, you've definitely convinced them. <laughs> and I'm, I'm gonna, with the big sad kitty eyes and even a tear rolling down my my cheek. Meow. Thank you. This will this will surely help. You're you're such you're such kind individuals. Oh, I I always love to help the little people of the world. I I I do hope that your mother gets better soon. I'm going to take note of where she put her coin purse. And I'm going to send out my mage hand to attempt to pickpocket while I'm distracting her with <laughs> this, um, this cutesy look here. Savage. Jesus. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, she, she probably just hangs it right on, right on her belt. Perfect. Um, and go ahead and pickpocket with your mage hand. <laughs> Forget the highs. Just swipe more tickets. Uh, that's a 14. 
Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, she's she's so enamored. I'll say you're able to get quite a bit. You're you're able to, to nab another 50 gold out of there uh, okay. with your mage hand um, uh, before the exchange is done. And awesome. she turns around and, and starts to leave. And uh, as she's leaving, I'm going to wave. Meow! Thank you so much! Um, okay, so you and it have hawked your concert tickets for the night. <laughs> Yay! For a grand. Damn. <laughs> Shit, son. <laughs> Yay! And uh, it, I'm guessing you were just like observing around the corner or something like that. Yeah, I'll, I'd keep and watch. Yeah, so Perched gonna, up on the wall. Yeah, and hop over. We scored big. Yeah, we did. Do we even do we even need to go to this? I don't know this other place with all these gold coins. Well, I mean, you know, we don't need to right now, but we could. Hmm, that's very true. You do have a point. Also, nice job with the voice change. I've been I've been practicing. You you, you told me I needed to uh, get more cutesy to pull off some of these some of these cons. Well, yeah, obviously. I mean, if you sounded like that. They think you are an old man or something. So what should we do? Well, let's uh, let's go head over to District 28. Maybe okay. we can hitch a ride on a wagon or something. Oh yeah. Okay. Good plan. Hoot hoot. 24, but yeah. <clears throat> right. So I Damn wrote it. down as 28 on my thing when you oh. first said it, and uh, yeah. So I'm gonna change it real quick. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were doing a character thing or a. No, it's a John thing. It's not a character okay. Thing. I mean, Just you're gonna end up in, in the wrong district. <laughs> I know. I know. You want to try and hitch a, a ride on a wagon? Yeah. Yeah, we can try uh, and ride on a wagon. Sure. Make a perception check. Either one of us, or you make both. John. Okay. No, both of you. Say, you should definitely roll it. Probs. Ah! <laughs> oh, John! Definitely roll it. You said perception. Oof. Yes, please. Do your eyes explode with a crit fail? Oh, oh wait, no, I'm sorry. You roll the, the percentage, Sean, not me. Bad. I mean, I'll take your percentage for sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll definitely take your percentage, but it's 73. Uh, no, we'll go with the 23% on okay. a failure. Um, you, uh, you're looking around, and you're looking around. You're just not paying attention, and you fall into an open uh, manhole cover. <laughs> just, cla- just classic Looney Tunes. Just like and, hovers uh, in the air for a few seconds and then holds up a sign that says "Yikes!" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, fall you fall into this this little sewer grate here. Uh, you take um, you take four poison damage for the sledge you just fell in. Probably not healthy, and you now stink and are covered in goo. Well. Uh, I'm going to uh, use a few casts of prestidigitation to unsoil my clothing. And sure. <laughs> I'm going to begin uh, cleaning myself the only way I know. All right. Um, and Zoe, you rolled a 22? Yeah. Okay, a 22 on perception. Yeah, you see a, uh, you see a wagon um, just plopping along in the general direction of, of the lower district mm-hmm. of the city. And... Uh, after uh, after Chester here pulls himself up out of the out of the sewer, you kind of just grab him by the paw and start dragging him that way. And uh, you guys hop on to the to the back, and you're cruising along. Yeah. Um, back over to Vora and or Eberus. Eberus is going to realize he let his uh, passion get a hold of him. And he missed the lecture on the uh, the raised island. I can't remember the name of it at the moment. Uh, because when that raised was when his monastery was destroyed. So he's convinced there's a connection. But uh, got distracted by Mr. Hammerfist. So he's going to go sit in penance for the rest of the afternoon and attempt to atone for that. Missing the golden opportunity? Yep. <laughs> sure. Okay. Um, yeah, you, uh, you're just sitting in, like, the, 
Are you sitting like just out of the festival grounds, like trying to find like a temple, maybe to the Tempest domain, or? Um, no, pretty much. He's gonna find the central square area. And... Oh, I mean the festival is in the central square, buddy. Oh well, I mean like the the like because I'm assuming there's gonna be like a fountain or some kind of like piece in this. Oh center. sure, yeah. Right. So he's gonna go for like find a spot near there, and just. Pop on his knees, start ignoring the world around him, and start praying. Sad old man in the fountain. Yeah. Uh, Vora, you you got anything you want to do? Do you need a reminder on what's available? Um, no, I had an idea. How uh, sunny is it today? Oh, it's a beautiful, bright day. It's the perfect day for a festival. So Vora is getting a migraine from all of this drenched sunlight and he is going to go look for a vendor that sells goggles like Riddick style goggles where they're just super dark so he can actually see without getting a migraine just that over overexposure to light uh sure yeah uh roll a perception check or actually uh no an investigation check I was about to be like no this will determine how much time it takes you to uh, find what you're looking for. 16. Uh, you turn around from getting your your uh, swindle gem and your actual gem. Uh, you turn around, you walk down like maybe like five more booths, and there is a clothing vendor um, selling all arrangements of, of various clothes, and uh, you do happen upon a, a nice set of uh, shaded goggles. I would like to uh, grab them and go up to the uh, the merchant there. Okay. Uh, the merchant here, he's just a portly little gnome. And uh, he looks up and he's like, uh, Oh, oh, hey, how uh, how the heck are you? So he's going to walk up with the goggles and be like, How much for this, friend? Well, uh, to uh, to fit him to you, uh, no, I just probably need five gold for the goggles and probably another 10 for you know getting them custom fit with and, uh, with it, probably uh, uh, an hour of your time with it being such a lovely day and I would like to say maybe we could go a little lower well uh what you what you what you what uh, what price do you need my friend uh, for the fitting, I want to say probably about half. My head is not that big. Ah, no, but I've got to uh, cut new straps, and I've got to fit them to your head. It's all very technical. It's a whole process. But uh, maybe uh, maybe we can work something out, come to some agreement. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, maybe uh, maybe uh, maybe we go we go half. We can, we can meet you in the middle. Uh, uh, for this, it, you're right. It is such a lovely day, um, but uh, maybe you uh, you have something of uh, value of your own that you might be able to throw into the pot. I do actually. I do have this uh, ring that you might be interested in. Oh, uh, yeah. Let me let me take a look at that. Um, giving I... you the ring that you just bought from the. Yeah, I also slipped the cert the certificate with it. Okay. Um, he takes a look at it real quick. Takes a look at the certificate, and uh, he says, uh, "Well, uh, this all seems to be in order. Are you sure this is this is a lot more than uh, than what I'd charge you for the fitting and the goggles?" Oh, I would like to ask for a little extra in, in exchange. Maybe you have some uh, better merchandise or or more gold. <laughs> yeah, he says, uh, well, that would have been 15 for the uh, for the goggles and the fittings. So I'd say this is at least worth uh, ooh, 100 gold or so. Say, so, uh sure, I'll give you I'll give you the difference. Uh, 85 gold. Nothing to nothing to laugh at. I'll take it. Um, and are you going to just wait by his booth while he measures you and then gets the traps all configured? Oh, yeah. Heck, okay. we might even have a nice little chit-chat. Sure, about, yeah, he... Uh, about the festival and... Yeah. He, 
he uh yeah he uh he's all excited about the festival he actually has a ticket for the concert tonight as well Ooh, what row um front row oh shit <laughs> Ooh, high roller <laughs> yeah oh Super. that's sweet i'm right behind you i got a row too oh so nice yeah oh i love cortana can't take my eyes off her <laughs> she's she's so enthralling i'm so so enamored with her i've never seen her before but from everything i've heard it's supposed to be quite exhilarating oh you are in for a treat tonight uh, and yeah, you have a nice, pleasant little conversation that lasts until uh, up until it's time for him to close up so he can go get ready. Hooray! Uh, do goggles give me any kind of benefit or? Let me think about that. I mean, obviously they're shaded, so I'd say they definitely uh, reduce your sunlight sensitivity. But I, I, I need a little time to think on it. It's all good. I just wanted to, you know, do something. Do do some Chronicles of Riddick shit? Oh, yeah. Uh, let's jump over to It and Chester. Um, the the cart you're on rolls through. Um, you know, it's it's you hear off in the distance cheering and stuff as it sounds like the preliminary cons- activities are going under. And you arrive at... Uh, District 24. All right, so we're going to be looking for the Temple of Light. Um, I'll assume that we'll know it when we see it. Um, yeah, you kind of can't miss it. There's um, there's about four guards uh, that you would recognize as members of the secret police organization known as the Spiders uh, out here um, okay. guarding, the, uh, guarding the outside perimeter. And they're just standing around ch- chatting, you know, not expecting any trouble. Um, and there's the front entrance there, uh, so so you you get a pretty straight on view right as you uh, come into the district. And what's the uh, what's the lighting outside like? Is it nighttime with street lights? Is it twilight? Is it no, still- it's it's it, it's still uh, daylight out. It's about five o'clock in the evening, okay. so um, not quite getting towards sunset. Yet. Okay. Uh, Chester's gonna look over at it and. What's the play, Mal? Hmm, I, uh... I don't really know. Maybe we should watch for a little bit. I mean, there's only, what, four guards? Do you think they'll switch, maybe? Stakeout. I like it. Stakeout. Let's do it. And, well, it is vigilantly staking out. Chester takes a nap. <laughs> um, <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, it... So you notice that uh, after about 15 minutes of... of Chester napping. Um, two of the guards go inside the building. One stays out front, and the other uh, starts circling around w- towards what looks like the back of the building. Okay, so um, I'm gonna wake up Chester, and I'm gonna nudge him with my foot. Yeah, I was paying attention, Meryl. Hey, hey, hey! Uh, two guards. Two guards just went into the temple, and the other one went around the temple. Or it went around to the back of it. So there's only one guard uh, guarding the front entrance. Should, should we go? Uh, yeah. I, I think I got a distraction. Let's let, let's do this. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 sneaky time. Let's let's sneak up, and I'm gonna sneak, I'm sneak. Gonna, I'm gonna do the decoy thing again. You remember that move? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you act like a little baby. No, no, no. Where I where I make the I, I make the that look like the person runs inside or something like that. Okay, whatever you say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's do it. So we're gonna we're gonna sneak on up. We're gonna stealth, stealthy and smelly. Okay, both of you roll some stealth checks. Oh, oh, sorry. But my cooker's being stupid. No worries. Your stealth is high, dude. Yeah, I know. I'm a rogue. Aww. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, the guard does not notice you stealthing up. All right. So when we when we get up towards the uh, the entrance, we're gonna sort of like hide like around a bush or around a corner or something. And I'm going to cast a spell. Okie dokie. So I'm going to cast a silent image 
I'm going to make the image of just a suspicious looking person. And they're going to uh, run through the entrance of the temple or in, like towards the entrance of the temple. And then when the guard says something, they're just going to run away. Okay. So this, uh, this guard sees this weird, suspicious, creepy dude and just starts yelling, uh, Hey, Hey, you come back here. Get, get back here. And he starts taking off. All right. And then, uh, now, now we sneak in. Sneaky, sneaky, okay. sneaky time. We'll, we'll keep those same rolls going for okay, the, uh, okay. for the duration here. Um, yeah, you slink into the temple and, uh, you see lying in, uh, kind of a, a chalk line there. You see, uh, this grizzled old man, um, with a big old blade sticking out of his chest. All right. Um, does the blade look valuable? Just looks like a regular old short sword. Nothing okay. special. No worries, no worries. Um, and they said the money was on the guy, so I'm going to start searching this old man's body for some cash. Um, okay, yeah, you hear um, the other two guards that would have gone in uh, earlier. You hear them off in like, other areas of the temple kind of r- rummaging. So it's safe okay. to approach the body. Uh, go ahead and make an investigation check. Uh, it, what are you doing while Chester searches the body? Um, I'll give it a, I'm going to be looking around. Do you, um, what was I going to say? So is there like one kind of entrance or? Basically, it, 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 it's one tunnel that comes into like this big open room. Yeah. And this big open room has a couple of benches. It has the altar to uh, the light uh, domain. And then branching off to the left and the right is a hallway that leads to two other sections of the building. Wow. Okay. So it's basically T-shaped. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, I'll just be on the look- uh, lookout looking around. Sure. Uh, go ahead and roll perception. And while it does that, um, Chester, you find on the body, uh, you find a couple of gold-plated holy symbols that uh, seem to be mostly decorative. And you figure to the right fence, you might be able to hawk these for a couple hundred gold each. You also find a uh, tithing box on him, uh, a a coin box that he was probably bringing in from the outside. Okay. That uh, he probably left out there for like donations or something. And jingling around inside of there, you find about 20 gold pieces and a small sapphire that you'll need to get appraised. All right, I'm going to nudge it and be like, hey, I think we can get some good gold for these. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Um, right. a- as he turns to talk to you, uh, it with that 20 perception, you pick up the sounds of uh, foot, uh, foot movement coming from outside and from the side corridors as well. Okay. Um... So I'm going to let Chester, I'm like, hey, hey, I think someone's what? coming. They're from both sides. Oh, shit. Uh, we should find a good hiding spot. Okay. And uh, we're going to, let's see. Are there any, like, um, comically obvious places to hide, like uh, barrels or anything like that? Uh, you can hide under the benches. You could hide behind the altar. Um, if you really wanted to get creative, you could hide under the guy's, like, cloak. But oh God, might no. be obvious. <laughs> um, so let's roll some stealth to see if you, or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah roll to hide basically. Yeah. I, I think under the benches is probably our best bet right now. It's a seventeen for me. Twenty-seven. Oh, oh nat twenty. Holy nat shit! Nat twenty. Yeah. She just turns invisible. No, <laughs> yeah, you guys. Um, yeah. So, uh, so um, Chester, your first instinct maybe to like hide behind the altar and. Uh, it just like grabs you real quick and points at the the benches and ducks you you, you both duck underneath uh, the benches and hide as the guards all come in uh, the one guy from outside that you tricked comes running back and it's just like I think someone was trying to trying to get in here but I tried chasing him and he, he just disappeared the other one's like oh don't worry about it we gotta gotta get this body out of here uh you know, the religious folks don't really like it when dead bodies lay around inside of their, their temples and stuff. <laughs> and uh, the other one says, uh, oh, man, this is this is going to be a lot of paperwork tonight, huh? 
And the second guy says, yeah, yeah, Debbie, I know you hate paperwork, but you got to get it done. Got to get it done, Debbie. And uh, the the two guards that came in from the side go to pick up the body, and they're lugging him out um, as the third guy goes outside. So did they leave then with the body, I guess? Yes, they're taking the body outside to the uh, to wherever, whatever is awaiting outside. All right. Well... Is there anything else valuable in here we can snag real quick? Um, I mean, and, you know, depending on depending on how much looting, I mean, you know, you could you could Skyrim this whole place, you know, oh, well, take yeah, the plates yeah, yeah. and the candles and the. <laughs> 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 there, there are those two rooms off to the side that you haven't. Chester's gonna look over at uh, it, and we we sort of have this this language between us, and I'm gonna convey like, hey, do we check those rooms out or do we just get out of here? Mm, okay, and it will just like raise their eyebrows and wiggle them a little bit and be like, are you feel?" and whisper, are you feeling adventurous today, sir? And I'm just going to wink and uh, we'll start sneaking over to one of the side rooms. Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, the left or the right? Uh, we'll go. What are we closest to? Uh, you're closest to the right. We'll go that way. Okay. Uh, you go down to the right side uh, win- uh, room. Um, there is a open window um, with some glass beneath it that's all broken. Looks like maybe it was broken into. Um, and uh, on the on the desk, there is a bunch of uh, paperwork. Looks like different, you know, prayers, and hymnals, and whatnot. Um, maybe a couple of like just writings by this cleric. Maybe he was trying to make a big name for himself. Maybe he. He figured out a new uh, breakthrough on the domain of light or something, but he'll never know. Um, <laughs> Dang. Um, and yeah, uh, other than that, there's just a, a, a desk here with a chair and a bookshelf. Various okay. religious texts. And uh, I guess we'll sneak on over to the other room then. Um, sure. Uh, this room is is much more um, much more tidier than the other room. Uh, you've got this guy's bed, dresser, um, and a small shrine to his particular deity that he worships as part of the domain of light, which is a little weird because that's not how stuff normally works. But he's got his own little god uh, statue. Any gold? Like, are the statues made of gold? Uh, the statues are made of ivory, which is a pretty valuable uh, okay. commodity. Um, I'll snag those. Sure. Uh, get those appraised at some point. Yeah. That's uh, how many? Uh, two statues. Two. A man and a woman. It, are you uh, looking for anything in particular here? Eh, just anything cool looking. Yeah. Uh, there's a there's a cool, like... Um, <clears throat> There's a cool, like, silver necklace hanging on the uh, the bedpost at the foot of the bed. Oh, um, a mistress. <laughs> I, do ne- does necklaces mean mistresses? I, I, you I mean, don't know, Josh. If he doesn't know, we don't have to explain it to him. It, it is hanging off of a bedpost, man. I mean, you know, maybe this guy just got distracted. I don't know. With a mistress. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I'll Maybe he's see. into it himself. Don't judge him for his uh, his particular taste in jewelry. So it's, it's a nice silver necklace with a little uh, purple uh, amethyst set into it. Um, you could probably get that appraised for some good money. Ooh, I'll put it on. Actually, you're gonna put it on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You adjust the uh, the the chain a little bit so it's not so not hanging so low <laughs> on you. Um, <laughs> Does your chain hang low? Does it? Does it hang but, um, but yeah, it, it's it's quite fetching. Cool. I'm gonna run over to Chester and be like, Chester, Chester, look what I found. Don't I look pretty? Wow. Uh, I'm not really into owls, but yeah. But it looks good on me, right? Uh, yeah, it really compliments your um meow beak. Yeah, that's what I thought. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Anyways, uh, let's get out of here. Okay, let's go. Are you going out the front door or the broken window? I was going to say the broken window, actually. Yeah. Let's poke our heads out first. Yeah, we're going to do it carefully. 
Um, yeah, you uh, you poke your head out the broken window, um, and uh, see the guard that was circling the building. He is just getting towards the end of the uh, the corner of the far end of the building. His back is to you. All right. Well, I guess we uh, sneakily pop out and get off Temple grounds. Sure. Um, as you're uh, slinking away, um, you all of a sudden hear sirens going off in the district. Uh, and a large crashing and explosion can be heard from the direction of District 53. Thank you so much for listening to our show. If you like what you've heard, please leave us a review on iTunes so that we can keep growing our show to a bigger and bigger audience. Follow us on Twitter at AreWeDeadYetPod and check out our website for maps, cast info, and more content at oneuppodcasts.com. That's one U-P-P-O-D-C-A-S-T-S dot com. Intro and outro music produced by Salty Dog Company. Search for Salty Dog on SoundCloud. That's S-A-L-T-Y-D-A-W-G. Additional background music and sounds provided by Tabletop Audio under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. Tabletop Audio has some great ambience, sound effects, and background music that will really bring your tabletop games to life. Check them out at tabletopaudio.com. Additional sound effects provided by Inspector J at freesound.org under a Creative Commons Attribution License. Check them out at jshaw.co.uk. We'll be back in two weeks with another episode of the show. Bye!